Hello and welcome to another episode of Prayer Partway. I am Olaumi Heavens, event veteran, media entrepreneur, and prophetic watchman. On Prayer Partway, I talk about everything prayer and anything the Father will have me talk about. Today, we're taking a look at does your thought really count? You know, in the place of prayer, why should your thought count? After all, we talk about what you say a lot. I think um, an episode I even asked, what are you saying? Especially because we're talking about what you say outside of the place of prayer, where you think it's not a declaration, where you think it's not church and all that. We've spoken about that. And now we're looking at your thoughts. And one will think, why would I even think about my thoughts when it comes to prayer? Let's take a look at a few scriptures before we look at, you know, the action of the woman with the issue of blood in Mark. I'm going to keep it short this time. Yes. Um, and of course, happy Father's Day in advance. This is Saturday. Um, tomorrow is Sunday and it's Father's Day. So we celebrate all fathers out there. Let's take a look at Ephesians 3. Now in Ephesians 3.20, um, let's use the English, English Standard Version. He says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Now, why is he talking about our thoughts? I mean, does it mean that God answers our thoughts? Apart from the fact that scripture lets us know that our thought is important because he said, you know, when the scripture says you should guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. It's part of it because whatever you take in, it's garbage in, garbage out. That's why when you hear people talk about, um, for instance, what, what they feel or what they're doing. It's something that they've dwelled on for a long time. So when people, when people tell you, oh, study scriptures or dwell on the scriptures, there is something about doing that that cleanses your heart, that cleanses your mind. Why would God want to cleanse your mind or wash your mind, you know, with his word? It's because naturally man is not, you know, when the Bible says, oh, the heart of man is desperately wicked. It's not because there's anything, he's not out of order in the first place. That's after the fall of Adam. It wasn't out of order anymore. The only thing that made man come back to having the mind of Christ was one when Jesus Christ came and reconciled us with the father. So the original thought of man after Adam is not anything good. It's not anything pure. And you realize when they said the battlefield is the mind, a lot of times when you lose the battle in your mind, you realize that what comes out of you is not even faith. So you might have people who you are talking about um, their problems. You're seeing how is it going to work. No matter what you say, because they haven't caught the light or they haven't dwelled on a particular thing and really taken it into their heart and their mind, what comes out of their mouth is actually the opposite of what God is saying concerning them. And now this scripture says that he can do, you know, he, he talks about answer coming beyond just what you say, but what you ask or, you know, he talks about your imagination. What are you imagining? You know, I remember a minister talking about um, how when we're growing up, we start to build castles in the air. You're thinking about, okay, if I become the richest person in the world, if I can help the poor, if I can build this institution. And some parents take a look at you and think you're building castles in the air. Be realistic. But you see, the reality of what we think sometimes is reality doesn't even make sense. Because God, in a way, wants to change our perspective wants to change the way that we think and all that wants to change the state of our hearts ephesians 1 18 it says let's um look at also the new living translation i love the way this puts it he said i pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those called his holy people who are his who are his rich and glorious inheritance there's a light that i believe is shed into your heart by the word of god there are promises that come to you by the word of god now let's go to the scripture i was talking about um in mark 5 you know the story of the woman with the issue of blood he says um, let's start from about 25 he says the woman in the crowd had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years 
she was bleeding for 12 entire years and she had endured such suffering at the hands of many physicians. She had spent all she had and was not helped at all, but instead had become worse. She had heard reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and taught his outer robe. For she thought, if I just touch his clothing, I will get well. So there was an expression even in her heart, in her mind of what she wanted. She expected something. You know, when we're talking about, you know, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Expectation is not necessarily what you have said or what you have voiced. It's what is in your mind, what is in your heart. That thing that your spirit has already laid hold of. That thing that you have constantly dwelled on and it has become the thing that you want or the thing that you believe in. You know, when one is talking about unity sometimes, you know, you say when two shall agree. I had a very lovely perspective from Apostle Abel concerning that scripture of when two people, when two agree upon a thing. He says, you know, when two agree, we think it's just two people, two human beings. And I love the perspective that he brought. He said, but two also within your thought pattern, your mind and your mouth, are they in agreement? Am I saying, oh, I'm rich. And then in your mind, you're thinking to yourself, you can never be rich because I mean, in your lineage, they don't have money. You understand what I'm trying to say? What I'm saying is in this season, as you pray, guard your heart. As you pray, constantly wash your heart, your mind with scriptures, with the word, so that a light can hit your heart and your mind that will help you have a perspective that is a God kind of perspective. Because not only does God hear what you say, he hears your thoughts. Look at in scripture, a lot of places where they said Jesus knew, he, could, he read their mind, he heard what they were thinking. The same way God hears what we are thinking. Our thought is as strong as what we are saying. Our thoughts, I repeat it, is as strong as what we're saying. So why am I telling you this? Because a lot of times when you're praying, you find people who tell you, um, well, I'm praying, I don't know what's happening. You need to ensure that every side is covered. Everything is balanced. So you're speaking in the spirit, you're, con you're praying concerning a thing. I'm not saying thoughts will not come. You know, evil thoughts come, different things, because the enemy is not just going to roll over and die. He's not going to play dead. You know that he's always looking for an avenue to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, so when the devil comes, with words when it comes with pictures that are not of God you need to counter it with the word of God you need to make sure that even if you don't have it in your mind in your heart or offhand go through scripture look for what God says concerning that thing and start to meditate on it when the Bible tells us to meditate on the word day and night is because he knows that we need to get to a point where your mind your heart actually catches what God is saying concerning that matter and if your heart catches it it draws a picture or creates a picture within your mind and your heart that aligns with what your mouth is saying and aligns with what God is saying and it makes the job easier so it is not a case of I am saying something with my mouth but it's not even getting to my heart because what I carry in my heart is totally different so it's almost like a confusing thought your mouth says go and your heart says come your mouth says go and your heart says come your mouth says yes I want it and your heart says no I can't get it so I want to encourage you today no one can do it of their own accord. We know already through scripture that it is not in the power of a man that works to direct his own path. So it's important during this season, as we pray, to also watch the pictures that are in our heart. It's very important. So I want us to take note of this just in case you haven't taken note of it or you haven't, you haven't been proactive enough about it. It's something that I work on. If any thought that does not align itself with God comes to my heart, I don't answer back with a thought. I answer with my mouth. I rebuke it and I say what God has said concerning my life. Thank you so much for joining today. We're just going to say a short prayer. So I kept it short. We're going to say a short prayer um, and then we can say goodbye. Father Lord, we thank you for 
you constantly have something for us. You always call our attention to various things within your scripture, within this prayer pathway. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your empowerment. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to help our minds, help our hearts to be aligned to you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you set the right pictures before us in the name of Jesus, that our thoughts will constantly align with what God has said concerning our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the empowerment of the Spirit like never before. Thank you, Father, for it is done. Thank you because the Holy Spirit is our professor and it teaches us all things. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So until I come your way again, stay prayed up.